This is a Napolitan pizza made by a beginner. Oh yes, if you're watching this video, you're not a Napolitan pizza chef and you wanna learn how to make it, like a beginner. And let me tell you, I have been learning from the best pizza chefs and I came up with this easy recipe for me for home. You will love how easy this recipe it is to follow. Listen to the sound. See? It's nice, it's beautiful. Hi, and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook fantastic Italian recipes. And the Napolitan pizza is one of the best creations in Italian cuisine. So let's make it together, the easy way. If you have a wood fire oven, you can make sensational Napolitan pizza. If you don't have it, you need to watch the video up here by Lucio, where he shows you how to cook Napolitan pizza in your electric oven. To make the perfect Napolitan pizza dough, we need one kilo of zero zero flour. Then we need one teaspoon of dry yeast, 600 ml of water, because we're making this pizza dough 60% water, five teaspoons of salt, and just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. My recommendation is to knead the dough using a stand mixer. It is so much better with a stand mixer. It's more fun to do it by hand. It's much better for you, you know, for your mental health, because you, know, you get rid of your stress. But to make the perfect Napolitan dough, we use a stand mixer and you never, 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 never fail. Now, these are the accessory that comes with a stand mixer. This is what you normally use when you make bread, you know, or pizzas. I actually prefer to use this one. I've been using this for a while and it does turn out to be okay. So you choose. I will go for this if you can. But this is my homemade, home cook option. The first thing we want to do is we want to get the water, which is a room temperature, of course, and we put it in there, 600 ml of water. After you put the water in, what you do is you want to put a little bit of flour in there, just a little bit, okay? Not too much, just about 10%. And now quickly, we want to mix everything. Mix, mix, mix. Now that the flour is mixed with the water, we're gonna add the yeast, okay? What we want to do now is we want to activate the yeast. So let's do this for about two minutes. After about two minutes, we start adding the flour. Okay, we put about half of this. Let's put half of it. Here we go. And let's knead the dough at very slow speed. It's becoming creamy. How creamy it is. They go a little bit faster and faster. Yeah. Perfect. Look how creamy it is. Oh, looks like a pecorino cream for cashew pepe. Now, really slowly, let's add the flour. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Keep adding the flour. See, now it's more dense. See, the consistency is changing. See that? Add a little bit more. Yeah, that's what we want. It's happening. It's happening. Oh yes, baby. Oh yeah. At this point, let's go lower, lower. Let's finish to put the flour in there. And now, the last five minutes, we want to be a little bit faster. Perfect. All right, what we do now is Get the dough out. Oh, it's nice and sticky, just the way we want it. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful dough. And this is what we want to do. On the kitchen bench, put a little bit of flour at the bottom. Just do this. See the extra flour that we have here? We just put it on top, okay? Put the salt. Just knead like this. 
quickly need it. Let's get all the excess flour. And let's put it back in the KitchenAid. What we do now is we are going to knead the dough for five more minutes or until it's ready. KitchenAid is strong. Okay guys, as you can see, see the dough is stuck to get, it's together. The bowl here is clean. There's nothing else left. So what I like to do now, we've got three more minutes to go. I just like to add about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is something I do, you don't have to do. Some chefs say extra virgin olive oil doesn't do anything to it. I just like it, okay? Let's put a little bit and let's do two more minutes. Alright guys, after five minutes, the dough is ready. So this is what we need to do now. Get it out. And let's just finish the dough now on the kitchen bench with a little bit of flour, not too much. See, the dough is nice and moist. So beautiful. And here we have the dough. Look how easy this is. Stand mixer did everything for you, look at that. This beautiful dough. Now let's check. This is the homemade way to check if your dough is good. The homemade way, okay, not the professional way. Let's see if it bounces back. It does. So this is perfect to go. Come on. Now we need to rest the dough, okay, between 16 and 20 hours. I recommend you to get a large bowl. You get a large bowl. So we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and make sure it's hair tight. We don't want hair to go through, otherwise the dough will dry up. And we don't want that. The reason why I like to use plastic wrap is because I can also see the process of the pizza. I can see the pizza growing in there, you know? See through, you know? Okay, and now let's wait. Guys, it's the day after, and let me tell you, look at this beautiful dough. Let's reveal the dough, look at that. Look what happened over here. No, look guys, the smell. Yeah, it smells so good, but look at the bubbles. And I want you to look at the bubbles here, okay? Look, look at the bubbles that the dough created. Guys, this is a very good sign. Okay, let me tell you what I did over here, okay? It's cold in Sydney right now, okay? And what I've done is I left my dough out of the fridge because the room overnight was about 15, 16 Celsius degrees. There was no need for this to go in the fridge. But let me tell you, if where you are, it's warm, you leave it out of the fridge as much as you can, and before you go to sleep, you put it in the fridge, okay? So overnight, it doesn't explode, you know? Because if it's too hot, I find myself, not a professional, uh, when it's too soft, it's a bit too hard to manage, okay? We want it though that it's easy to manage. So look at look how beautiful it is. Come and have a look. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put some flour on my hand, put a little bit of flour on my hand, and we just, just do that. Look, 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 look at this dough. Look how beautiful this dough is. Look at that. Look at this wonderful, wonderful dough. Of course, the credit goes to Johnny Di Francesco for teaching me how to make the dough, because without Johnny, there won't be this dough, guys. If you are a pizza lover, you do need to invest in this. You buy this, this is like a pizza tray where you put your pizza bowls, and I completely recommend this. You do need this. If you don't have it, just get a nice deep tray, and what we do is we put flour at the bottom so the dough doesn't get stuck. Just put flour there everywhere. Okay, this is the lid which is gonna seal it hair tight. If you don't have the lid, you can actually use uh, glove wrap. Now, that's what we do before we make the pizza bowls, okay? Now let's make the pizza dough. Here is the flour. Let's get a beautiful dough. Look how wonderful it is. Look how beautiful this dough is, look at that. Now let's cut a little bit. Now, we want each pizza bowl to be about 250 grams. All right, this is 280, a bit too much. 255, that's perfect, okay? Now, this is what we do. This is how I like to do my pizza bowl. Just like that, just to this. And 
And here it is. This is my pizza bowl. It's done. That's how simple it is. Oh, look guys, I've cut this in half. Look at this beautiful dough. Look at the inside of the dough. Look at the structure inside the dough. How beautiful. Look how perfect this is. Hmm? Perfection. Not bad for a beginner. Let's place the pizza balls in the pizza tray. All right, so let's do this. We cover it and we wait at least four hours before we make the pizzas. Four hours, five, six, seven, at least four hours. And we keep it at room temperature, not in the fridge. From now on, no fridge anymore. These pizza bowls can be used within a week, okay? So if you don't wanna use them today, keep out of the fridge what you use today and you can put the rest in the fridge, okay? And you use it the day that you wanna use it, within a week. But always remember, you need to take them out of the fridge four hours before you use them. The reason why is because the fridge stress them out. They make them too mm, stressed. They need to be relaxed, okay? But see you in four hours. Look what happens after four hours. Look at the dough, look at the dough. After four hours, look what we get. Those pizza bowls, beautiful smell. So what are we gonna do now is we are gonna get one pizza dough out and we are gonna make one pizza. Let's get it out. And this is what we do. We put some flour here on the, on the bench, put the pizza there, and this is what we do now. We stretch it like a Napolitan style, okay? Just put the fingers there in the middle and do that. We don't want to touch the edges. See the edges? The edges are so important, which you don't want to go on the edges because the edges is the cornicione needs to grow. They need to grow the edges, okay? So, what are we going to do now? This is the Napolitan technique of stretching the dough. That's it. Done. Done in no time. See, a pizza is done. Okay, guys, what do you do if you cannot all spread the pizza like I did before, by hand? Hmm? What do you do? Okay, it's not going to be easy, right? So, this is what we do. We get a salad bowl. Just get a round salad bowl with a round base, okay? You put your pizza on top and you just stretch it like this with your hand. Do not touch the edges, please. Do not touch the edges. You just do this and push the edges to the side, okay? You still want the flour there, but you basically stretch it by doing this. This is something anyone can do. A kid can do, you can do it, anyone can do it. If you want to stretch, do not touch the edges, but what you do is you do that. See what you do with the hand? You just push like this. The dough is so soft that you should be able to do this very, very, very easily, okay? This is very simple. Look, it's done. Make sure you have no flour at the bottom. Let's remove the flour. Now, if we have flour on the bench, what's gonna happen is when you put the pizza in the oven, the bottom will burn, okay? We don't want that. Okay, now, we're gonna make a mozzarella, salami, basil, and tomato base pizza with my favorite pecorino cheese. So this is what we do now. I've got a beautiful tomato here, which is San Marzano, crushed by hand, with a little bit of salt and basil, okay? We put it here in the middle, put it in the middle, and spread it. Spread it everywhere. Look at this beautiful tomato. Look how wonderful it is. In the meantime, my oven, it's at 400 Celsius degrees, okay? You do need to have a wood fire oven or a gas oven that can reach high temperatures. If you don't have it, you can watch my video up here, the video I did with Lucio. He shows you how to make Napolitan pizza at home. Now, we're gonna put the pecorino cheese. We love pecorino cheese. We're gonna put mozzarella cheese. We're gonna put the salami. Now, this is not called pepperoni, okay? Pepperoni is not a word. Pepperoni, it's salami. Salame piccante, no pepperone. Pepperone, it's capsicum in Italian, okay? It's pepper. 
You don't call pepperoni salami pepperoni, okay? More basil on top. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And we're ready to put it in the oven. It is important for you guys to have a pizza peel. It does help, especially if you have a wood fire oven. So what we want to do here is we want to have something on the side so we elevate the peel. See, it needs to be like this. Now, before we put the pizza on the peel, put some flour on the peel. Just spread it like this, not too much, just a little bit. So that helps, prevents for the pizza to get stuck on the peel. We get the pizza from here and we move it on top of the peel. Then we stretch it on the peel, just like this. Stretch it, see? And we try to make it fit, okay? So it now perfectly fits on the peel, it moves, and it's ready to go in the oven. Come on, let's go in the oven. Okay, pizza can go in the oven. Perfect. 90 seconds to go. So the first 45 seconds, we want to cook the back there. 45 seconds, okay? Oven, it's at 400 Celsius, so it's gonna cook in no time. 90 seconds are more than enough. You don't want the cheese to burn, you want the beautiful flavors to make love together, to be cooked just enough. If you use passata or a tomato sauce already cooked, you kind of drying up the sauce in there. You want the fresh peeled tomato in there, raw, and the flavors will come out when you put it in the oven. Okay, we got 10 more seconds. See what's gonna happen. Look at the edge here. Look at the look at the edges are growing already. The bottom is very hot. Okay, let's take it out. Take it out. See we got the first edge here, the first side here. It's it's almost done. Now we turn and we do 15 seconds per side. So 15 seconds there. Take it out. Take it out. See the edge here? The edge here is nice and cooked. So what we do now is we turn again and we do 15 seconds. Guys, this is the perfect pizza. The pizza napoletana that you want to serve to your family and friends. The perfection. Let's finish off this side. See this side here, I don't, it's a bit pale. I don't want that pale pizza there. Let's finish it here. Let's finish it near the fire. I don't want to peel. Pale pizza there. And one, two, three. And we are ready. Ready to serve this wonderful Napolitan pizza. Pizza Napoletana. Made with love. Come on. So yeah, what do you think of this pizza? Look how wonderful this is, huh? Come on, tell me. What do you think of this? Here, look at the crust. Look at this. What do you think of this? Please be honest. Doesn't it look fantastic to you? Doesn't it look fantastic to you? You want the pizza to rest for about a minute before we cut it. But look how beautiful it is. Look at the edges. Look, listen to the sound. See? It's nice. It's beautiful. Look at this beautiful pizza. Look how beautiful it looks. It's nice. It's moist. It's full of flavors. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at this. This is all made. I'm not a pizzaiolo. I'm not a pizza chef. But this is good for beginner like me. This is great. I love it. If I can do it, you can do it. You can make pizza napoletana at home in your own kitchen. Come on. And can I say, it's an investment. Get a nice pizza oven, a small one, and you have so much fun. It's the best. Better than Netflix, better than PlayStation. It's so much fun. Now, guys, it's time to cut the pizza. Cut it into four. I like to have a big slice, and this is the big slice I'm having. Look how perfectly cooked at the bottom. Look at that. Perfection at the bottom. The pizza is not too floppy. Yeah, you know, look how easy it is to fold and how easy it is to enjoy. Oh my God, let's have a look at this slice now. Look at this slice. Easy to fold, delicious. 
Oh, all I can say is I need to eat. <laughs> mm. Moist, fragrant, full of flavors. The peeled tomato makes the difference. The salami, no pepperoni, salami. Mm, beautiful. And made salami. Mm, beautiful dough. The dough is so important on the pizza. Light, which is very important. When you know to these big franchise pizza companies, they put so much yeast in there and the pizza is so heavy. It's so much. This one is light. It's beautiful. You can eat three of them and you're not full. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All I can say is please let me eat this wonderful pizza. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. Mmm. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate pizza. Mmm. I love it. Mmm. Mmm.